keep it rolling. But yeah, man. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my Valentine? <laughs> I, I think I think uh, given given the circumstances, that is appropriate. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's that's what the, that's what this is all about. I feel like I've been noticing um, a lot. And anytime I see something, whether it's on like social media or if it's like, like I, I really try to be as transparent with myself that maybe it's just like my age group and it's not something that uh, I should like attribute to like a macro scale. Like this is like what society is doing I, right I, now. I get stuck in that all the time. Like, especially as I get sucked into Facebook and that be, kind of becomes my world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I forget like, you know, there's, there's all these people out there, there's all these age groups out there. And, and I try to think <laughs> of this larger market. I do get sucked into that a lot. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say this Valentine's day, I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, just being like, you know, like my, for example, in the Facebook groups that we're in, there's people that are just like, you know, all my friends are my fucking Valentines or uh, something yeah. like that. You know? I like that. Maybe it's because like the majority of people in there are single. Uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> but, that, that's true. Like, honestly, that's something I've, I've kind of been on that for a while. This whole concept of like, I love the community. Like we are a family, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like, yeah, there's always this potential for a, for like a partnership, but you know, I don't want to lose touch with that bigger thing. And, uh, if I, you know, if I find myself in a, a closer relationship. I want that to be the foundation of the larger family. Like I always want to keep that big picture in mind. Fuck yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of the concept of, um, at least not directly like across the board, but like, like polyamory, for example, Ooh. I think that's why you see like a big influx of that yes. uh, in our generation is people are just like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to become like the spiritual property of somebody else's yeah. uh, desires and yeah. expectations. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe you could write it off as just, you know, perhaps that's always there in the younger, younger crowd and, and uh, maybe part of it's rebellious or this, that, and the other. But uh, <laughs> I definitely think a lot of it is a unique generational thing. Uh, and it's a reaction. Like you said, like we don't, we're not about ownership. We're definitely kind of, we're definitely kind of rebelling against capitalism in all its facets. Yeah. And I think that does carry into the, this idea of relationships. I don't think of it that way enough, but yeah, that's exactly what yeah, it's, it's something Yeah, <laughs> it's something I've kind of played with because, you know, part of this kind of American dream, which ties into capitalism and our, our culture in general, is about, it's about ownership. It's about your mm -hmm. partner, your family, I need your, your house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, but, but we, what we're realizing, and this is like what perhaps McKenna would call the archaic revival is that we're realizing that we want to be a part of the, the bigger picture. We don't want to be boxed off in our own little neighborhood with our own little house and our picket fence. We want to be part of a, a community, a, a tribe. Of course we want that. We want that intimacy. We want that family. Yeah. But, uh, I, I definitely think that we, our generation is tapping back into that, the bigger community. Yeah. Like, like, what do you think personally about, uh, I guess, not just polyamory, but I guess sort of the principle behind it, or at least a driving for it? Like, uh, um, so it's actually something I've thought about a lot recently, just, be, just given certain circumstances. Uh, and it's funny, um, you know, like a lot of people, whenever they come to obstacles or new situations in life, they will consult often their sources of uh, like leadership or, or inspiration, so to speak. Like yeah. a lot of times we can just look within for answers, but that was something that I was like really trying to figure out. And I was like, what, how can this work? How do I want to relate to this whole idea of, of, of polygamy and such? Um, and I found myself actually like looking at McKenna again, mm -hmm. like McKenna has always been a big inspiration. And I was just curious as to what he thought and what other people thought about it. And uh, he had some interesting ideas. I guess I won't go into, uh, into them as much. But basically what I think right now in terms of, of, of that is that um, there is, I think there's the, the potential for that. I think it can work. I think, um, but it, it has some requirements to it. And, and one of the requirements is a, is a, you know, a degree of openness and a, 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 an ability to overcome that the ego and to overcome our territorial instincts. Yeah. Um, so again, so Absolutely. it kind of it fits into this whole process of trying to evolve. It feels like a higher paradigm. For Absolutely. Sure. It, you know, this whole idea of utopia and community and, and uh, where we might find ourselves in the future, I think it's an essential part of this kind of larger family and community bonding. You yeah. Know, I, I, I think so. Um, but you know, at the same time, it's it's hard to completely overcome that. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. hard to overcome the <laughs> ego. It's hard to overcome the territorial competitive nature, um, especially whenever you think about you know the purpose of relationships. Which, well, I mean, the purpose being like like offspring of children, mm -hmm. and, and the offspring is obviously is made 
uh, with with a couple with their DNA. Um, one interesting concept that <laughs> I guess we'll see how much I actually end up referencing McKenna in this uh, session, but McKenna talked about um, in tribal societies before we kind of got into this concept of, of monogamy mm-hmm. is that of, of course a child has a parent from, but they didn't because they had like an orgiastic polygamous lifestyle. Um, it wasn't m- like my kid. It was the community's kid. It was yep. the tribe's kid. So yeah. that was a very interesting. Have you heard of that tribe where uh, they are like a orgiastic polygamous, but like the, the, the women will specifically, uh, tr- uh, try to have sex uh, and copulate, you know, with every male in the village. To, Interesting, because because they believe that their semen like contains like their I, I guess their archetype, if you want to call it that, wow. like, contains so their, so their so like, strengths and their trying weaknesses. to like collect them all. Yeah, Pokemon. Just fucking, <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> you gotta catch them all. Yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah, like that's, that's like the philosophy behind their village, and they believe that the that the child is a product, literally, of the village. So yeah. they, they, they have no conventional parent um, or uh, yeah. I mean that that's kind of uh, you know that's kind of. Uh, it goes against what, what, I, what I think of traditionally, and it also reminds me of how men and women approach sexuality differently. Like men are typically, like just looking at evolution, it's it's an evolutionary benefit, or it has been in the past. Go alpha. For, well, to be alpha and to spread for men to just spread your DNA, just as many partners as you can get, because you're just that's you're just pushing your DNA out there, yeah. and and yeah, part of that is being kind of the dominant. That's the idea. Um, whereas w- with the female, the idea is to select the the most you know the best genetic partner so it's kind of been like you know and that's like perhaps that translates into what we see today even though we have a monogamous culture we see a lot of cheating and we see a lot of this kind of thing happening because that it's programmed in our dna especially like i would say men it's programmed in in their dna to just put it out there and then with women a lot of times there may be some cheating just because they find a better partner or, yeah. or perhaps they just want, they also want something similar. Maybe they want some diversity. Yeah. Well, you know, I've all, you know, like kind of getting some distance from like a relationship that didn't work out or something like that. Like it, it's, it's been, it's easier to see when you look back on parts of relationship that didn't work out. It's like, you wouldn't blame the partner. Cause it's like, man, what I wanted to have been Hell with myself yeah. then, you, yes, you know, like, yes. like, yeah, I would, I, there's plenty of times in past relationships where I just it's like I wouldn't have wanted to be with me I wouldn't have fucked me yeah I don't know I wouldn't have fucked me that's uh well honestly how can you be mad at them that that, (laughs) honestly like that whole principle of like you can't be mad because you understand is such a fundamental principle in my life and and my dealings with with situations and relationships and drama it's just like that's what it comes down to if you just step into their shoes and even if it's something that hurt you even if it's something that's just like you know terrible yeah. even the most evil things you can think of even beyond relationships like some of the most evil things in history you can say well you know well that person was perhaps a product of their environment like perhaps they were abused and perhaps they were hurt and they yeah. just they were able they weren't able to channel it properly and they just took it out on someone else and so what that that train of logic and understanding ultimately leads to for me mm-hmm. is into the void is into God or into the beyond. It's like, well, it wasn't that person's fault. Um, there was some kind of there was some kind of quote I was reading that was an example of this. It was like, who's responsible? I think it was Watchmen. Um, but it's that kind of idea of like, who is responsible for this evil at the end of the day? We get mad at people or we get mad at things, but then ultimately, we, if we if we understand them enough and trace them back to their origin, we see the very like nature of reality. We see that the the laws of physics or, you know, what's whatever beyond that. So honestly, my anger goes into that place. It goes into the the mystery. It goes into the void. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, I was just talking about the same exact thing, uh, with my roommate this morning. It's like, uh, there's a awful things have happened to all of us. Right. You know, we all have like this propagation of our shadow self. You Mm -hmm. know, we have things, you know, we have secrets but maybe we've never told other people. You know, we have things that are just difficult traumas, right. anything. You know, but they end up in, in a way constituting your path. Like it's a part of you. Absolutely. It's a part of moving forward. So, you know, 
given the thought experiment, if you could go back and change something that was like a, maybe like a major difficult, traumatic thing, would you uh, actually change it? Yeah, that's a great question. Would that's you a, be who you are today? That's such an, yeah, that's a, it's a very wild question because it's like, oh man, you know, yeah, it's this whole concept of destiny. It's this whole concept of like, you know, even though there is suffering and these, these traumas we've gone through, they've made us stronger and they've made us who we are and they've brought us to where we are today. Um, so it's like, what I, my approach to it, the, the thought experiment is that, is that ideally I could imagine alternatives that perhaps I would have rather have been a part of, mm-hmm. but ultimately I accept, I accept the past. Um, and this honest, this whole concept ties into a, a lot of things that I've been thinking recently. Uh, one of the things is, you know, you talked about how these traumas and, and experiences that we've negative experiences that we've had are a part of us and, and they can affect where we go into the future. Yeah. And, uh, and though I accepted in the past, what the effort that I make within myself and, and within others is to try to resolve it and, and to try to heal it so that we can grow and so that it does not have a, a negative um, impact on us and to yeah. move past. So that's like this big, that's this big effort within this kind of healing, um, kind of like psych, uh, psychiatric kind of thing or psychology or also just spiritual healing. That's a big thing that I'm a part of is trying to dig deep and, and help people resolve those. I call them demons a lot of time. I, I use that yeah. as, I use that as a spiritual terminology to represent the same thing. And when you get better at addressing your own, you get a lot better at recognizing another people. Uh, you have to, you have to do your own thing first. And that's why with most people I'm, I'm like, you know, work on your journey, work on yourself, face your demons, clean your, you know, make yourself clean. And then once you're there, then you can start to focus on, on other people and beyond. Yeah. You see the correlation though, between like, uh, let's say maybe you detect some kind of, uh, habit or some, mm. you know, maybe like you could recognize when certain people dissociate like, in a certain conversation. And it's like, that's like, how you do it. It could be from a trigger. It could be like from, you know, some discussion that, that has happened. But I, I really do see a correlation in between that and people's depression. Absolutely. And, and their other neuroses. Like, you know, there's like yeah. something. It Usually it's really easy to spot when somebody like either apologizes a lot when they don't uh, need to or yeah. something like that. Oh, um, man. You're, yeah. you're so right. Like you see this whole effort of recognizing patterns or understanding triggers. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's something I employ a lot. Whenever I, when I see someone and I see how they behave on the surface, but I'm always looking at how, you know, I'm always looking to go like deeper and what that means, like how they're acting, especially when people are very depressed and, uh, I'm looking at, you know, why, like what triggers it or where did that come from? Like, you know, wanting to go deeper and figure out, uh, because ultimately that's where, you know, there can be some alleviation and comfort at the surface, but ultimately if you want to heal, I believe that you have to go in and you've got to get to the root of it and you've got to face it there. Um, yeah. so absolutely. like, like, let me ask you, let's say when, uh, maybe you encounter somebody in your day to day and you recognize something like that. And like, I know you, your sweet, articulate, loving person. <laughs> I mispronounced articulate, which I think is the most ironic fucking thing in the world. <laughs> You're so articulate. Yeah. <laughs> I just really appreciate that. But no, I, I was going to say, um, where do you draw the line between being absorbed into somebody's miasma and wanting to like help from from on high or whatever? Oh. The, however you want to, I don't mean it with that like with that fucking like value judgment. Like you're at a, like an elevated place, but it really is kind of like you need to draw a line in the sand to a certain degree where it's like I can't compromise my own stability, right? Or at least I, I can't compromise the entirety of my own stability to help somebody else. Absolutely. Like, yeah. So, uh, so for, like that's a very uh, complex topic, but I'll try to address it in, in, in a couple ways. Um, number one, in this whole concept of like keeping myself clean, um, you know, I am, I'm comfortable. Like I feel like I'm, I'm good where I'm at. So it's like n- no one is going to affect me without my awareness of it. Um, and then, but when it comes to who I just like what level I decide to invest and, and, uh, how I do that. Typically, if someone is open, if someone is, that's, that's the, that's the, the almost the prerequisite. If someone's not open, it, it, there's not much I can do. I can kind of play around and, and try to pull some strings very subtly, but there's really not much work to be done unless someone is kind of like almost like a surrender. And they're like, I'm open to, to, okay. to, to breaking down and figuring this stuff out and growing. You know, if I see that in people, I'm super willing to work with them. 
And then the only other obstacle may just be like, you know, a matter of time and, you know, just whatever resources I can dedicate. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just like that kind of me being open as a spiritual person, I want to be completely transparent. It's like I have, you know, nothing to hide, no, no, nothing I'm worried about. So it's like I can be open. So it really just becomes a matter of them. Like, do they want to be open with me? Mm -hmm. I've come across a lot of people who are um, who can, who can really get taken by their demons, so to speak. Yeah. They can be very toxic and they're so insecure. And when they, and, and that's the nature of, of demons is that whenever they're, ex, or, or uh, whenever they're exposed to, to the, the love and the light, they want to, they want to close off and anger and they just, you know, and I've seen some people just completely corrupted by it and they had, and I just, but I don't have to do anything. They just, they go, yeah. you know, so I, I, I live in love and, you know, some people come and some people go. <laughs> well, I mean, what more can any of us do at the end of the day? Right? Exactly. That's, I love that kind of concept. It reminds me of the whole like Thelemic, uh, or perhaps satanic, like do what thou wilt. It's just like, do you, you know, live by your principles, which yeah. for me is like love, truth, and beauty. And just do that. The very simple thing. And everything else works around you. Reality works around you. You know. Well, this speaks to you know, like kind of personally, my faith with my faith and love in general, not as like the hokey hallmark version of love, yeah, but, but love being yeah. like the abstract ever, concept, ever the, present the rhythm and momentum of like you know just existence. Hell yeah! But you know, within that, it's funny you should mention you know, those kinds of demons or a darkness within you, or maybe like a self-destructive, uh, or just inherently objectively destructive right. like, force within you is I had this, uh, epiphany, uh, in a pretty decent meditation I had probably like last week sometime, but been thinking of sort of like, okay, so you could look at the shadow self as this like this underbelly, like this like mass of darkness, like within you just, just for the sake of the analogy, think of it like within your gut, right? Like lower in it, like this darkness wants to rise mm. up and in, up into the light. But the only way to reconcile it is actually to actively push the light into it and illuminate that darkness. Right. Okay. So, but otherwise it does have the ability to inversely, rise within and attempt to affect the light and then like that's where it gets refracted and differentiated is that when you got like all this all this like light meeting darkness and then yes like, like so it's like you can meet somebody that's like full of love and you can see like you even with people that are like fucking up and maybe like really shitty maybe like i've noticed in people that are like let's say like really addicted to something and maybe they're like strung out and they're fucking around they're not trustworthy and like you just don't really know where they're at anymore <laughs> they're kind of gone you see a lot of their fucking true nature, their character. Not saying that their true nature is like what they're trying to do to score or some shit like that. Right. But I'm saying like, like they are very much them. I think that's why like people are attracted uh, to drugs in general. Is that like when you're abusing them, you feel you feel you know you're you're on a drug most of the time, but you're probably using that drug to feel normal and to be able to feel you know comfortable in your own skin. If that makes right. any sense. So I don't know. I'm kind of rambling at this point, but no, the concept I, I, I love, was that. I, I love what you're saying. And, and this is one of my favorite things to do is whenever, whenever you talk to people and you realize that we're talking about the same thing, but we've just kind of been using our own symbols and, and such and meditation. So I'll, I'll present what, how I conceptualize that same thing you're talking about. I love how you're literally sitting here like doing this. Because <laughs> what I was going to say is that is essentially the chakras for me is, is, is one of the biggest systems that I use to mm -hmm. understand that kind of the light and the darkness. Yeah. See, and that's kind of one, one thing I wanted to clarify is, um, is you know, I, I referenced this kind of like satanic and primal energy, which is like a lot of it's like that ego, selfish, self-preservation, sexuality, you know, ownership. That is within us. That's a part of us. And that's like, you know, to me, it's just like a primal energy. It's not even a negative thing. I know you were kind of, you had these, these concepts like shadow and light. Mm. Um, and, and I was talking over here about demons and these kind of corruptions. Yeah. But I kind of wanted to make the, the distinction between the corruptions and that primal energy. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that primal energy, and especially if we if we own it, it's not inherently and, good or bad. It just yeah, is. it's just it is. Yeah. And but whereas these kind of demons and corruptions and depression and all this kind of stuff it is like more of a disease kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, like to me, that primal shadow self, yeah. that kind of energy that flows is yeah. It, it's it's just I'm not gonna try to repress it. Like for example, Christ, yeah. Christians and and most people uh, try to just 
don't talk about it. Oh, you know, but it comes present. out. That's what I'm saying. Like, yes. That, that darkness comes It's going to come light. out. You can't like, tell the difference between dude, it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a primal energy. And that's, that's a big thought that I've been having is, you know, is most people repress it. And, but if, if you do that, I made a post the other day. I said, I said, the first thing is to, uh, is to like unleash the beast. Yeah. <laughs> unleash the beast or become aware of it, you know, and then you, then you seek to tame it. That's yeah. the concept. It's like the beast is like that primal, animalistic, egotistic kind of energy that's within all of us. And you, you can't repress it because then it's just going to manifest itself in really weird, perverse ways. Yeah. So I think the yeah. first thing is just to own it. Say, hey, I'm an animal. Yeah. We, I'm, I evolved and that's a part of me. Yeah. But keep it in check. Keep it in check, you know, like like we were discussing well, earlier. What, what does that constitute, though? Keeping, Keeping it, in, it check. in check. Yeah. What does that? Yeah. that, that, that how do, how do we leash the beast? Thing. Yeah. That's how do we what. Leash like, the beast and not go to fucking jail. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Like there are there are certainly some constraints that are placed upon us outside of our own will, yeah. such as like the law and culture, how people judge us. If you just come out and you're just like you know fuck everyone like it's all about me <laughs> that's obviously gonna you know that's i mean you can do that if you want but but so that's those are some systems that are in place you know naturally yeah. um but yeah so so in terms of in terms of keeping it in, in on a leash let's go back to the to the chakras mm-hmm. like i'm always talking about the chakras and and you said that that, that kind of enlightenment came to you through a meditation and i i often recommend chakra meditation to help understand the cell. So if we imagine that the red or the root chakra is that kind of primal energy, yeah. then, um, then what's next, the systems that keep it in check, such as how other people perceive us kind of becomes the orange. Orange is about kind of intimacy and uh, relationships with others. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of times we try to keep it in check. Um, well, it's actually, you know, a lot of that primal energy is trying to acquire relationships, especially intimate sexual relationships. Mm -hmm. But even beyond that, we seek to be a part of our community because that helps us to survive. Um, you know, so that's something that we need to do. We need to be able to kind of keep that beast in check because we need to be able to communicate and have friends and community, you know, for a lot of reasons, but even beyond there, you know, that, so that, that really covers the red, the orange and the yellow is those three is kind of like that, just the basic kind of survival thing. Yeah. Um, but what's beyond that, and and I think you kind of talked about like you were, this concept of like where light and darkness kind of meet, and and you you, you seek to balance and and that kind of thing. It's like to in me, the th- center of the seven chakras. Or that, something that's like kind of that. what the the green or the heart chakra is for me. Is like the place of of balance and. Uh, Dude, it's so wild. Green is a color that's really been speaking to me for the past like year yeah. or something like that. And I've seen a lot of people. Yeah. You know, like I, I've tended to plants. That, Put some green in my hair as well. I don't know. Green's just a fucking solid color. Like, it is. I don't know why, man. It's well, well, well you, you, you've got, of course, you've got nature, like, at, at the root of it. I, I love this whole concept of, like, whenever I'm doing art or I'm doing, like, any writing, I'm all about, like, uh, like druidism and, and nature and animals yeah. and stuff like that. So that's a big part of it. I can but. see, I can see, uh, I can see green in your aura, by the way, right now. Yeah. Like, especially because you're behind, like, a pretty, like, monotone colored wall. Like, yeah. I can definitely see, like, a little bit, like, I feel that. Around, like, I, uh, I I don't know if I'm really seeing auras. I'm kind of new to like well, like auric perception, but right. like, I think it's always been like that haziness on the perimeter that you see with people. Right. And I'm not sure if you know that's something that everybody sees. I think well, anybody can really see. I it think I think yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're if you're open to that and you're open to that perception, I definitely think it's possible to like perhaps physically or spiritually see some kind of aura. Yeah. But to me, you know, I, I typically just think about it pretty rationalistic and, and like, uh, like metaphorically yeah yeah i'm just like okay like, like if you know t- to me i would just be like i see like you're that chakra is like heavily the the place where you're at right now like you're in that place of love and balance and that kind of center and and, and i see it in myself certainly like sometimes i'm feeling like red and like that primal like satanic self but yeah. then there's that green kind of to me the green is heavily associated with like jesus and and buddha yeah. And because it's like concepts of balance and love and Zen and peace and, yeah. you know, the, the kind of, and it's also kind of like where you're at, like in the ego. Uh, well, uh, they say, even Freud said that, you know, we had the, the super ego, which is like up here, yeah. the, the id, which is like the primal. And then, so our ego is kind of the, the reconciliation force. It's like the thing in the middle. So mm-hmm. I typically try to ex- try to be in that realm most of the time. That's my place of balance. Oh, it's dope. It's a party. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and we'll, we'll finish it up. We'll, we'll, we'll rise to just to go through the model. Yeah. Yeah. So the green heart chakra and then, uh, the throat, 
uh, it's like a light bluish kind of hue. They, they, they call it like the, it's like a gateway. It's also associated, is that, it's is associated that, is that wisdom. Um, not quite. It's associated with, with expression, okay. uh, with like creativity, with communication and language. So that's also a place like we're, we're there now. Like we're, we're kind of existing in that, in that circuit or in that chakra, so to speak, mm-hmm. as we, as we articulate ourselves and, uh, and do that kind of thing. And then, and then as we move up to like the third eye, it's more of a, I think that would be, uh, like wisdom, I guess. It's more of like a, just, it's more of a, whereas the, the throat chakra are things that we can kind of express, whether it's through visual art or speaking or dance, yeah. but the third eye is kind of this beyond. It's like, I can't even express this. It's like, it's very associated with like psychedelic kind of states of mind and yeah. ult- just ultimate like religious revelation Mm -hmm. uh and then and then the the crown shocker being almost like beyond that it's just it's just absolute the cosmic energy that flows in yeah um the ultimate the void you know that kind of thing well you know i had this discussion with my roommate the other day too um once again uh in the midst of you know a a meditation session a pretty productive one at that yeah and um we were talking about how my my roommate was saying like observing the seven chakras as like points in uh, human consciousness historically too yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad we have this live stream going right now because it's that was a recorded fucking completely authentic enthusiasm from me. I love it. <laughs> well okay so um i mentioned that i had i had like a session where i was like recording myself uh several weeks ago and dude i went on this like i was on acid and I, I, I went through this like 30 minute. Like, this was like several weeks ago, you said? Uh, probably about a, maybe a little bit farther, probably about a month. I don't know. It was, it was a little while ago. Okay. But, uh, but I went through this like 30 minute like walkthrough of all these models. And I, I kind of started with the chakras like we just did. Yeah. And then that was kind of the next dimension was to talk about how it, it's correlated to evolution. Yeah. And that's where we get into one of my other models, which which is inspired by the chakras, but adds that dimension to it. And it's called uh, Timothy Leary's Eight Circuit Model yeah, of Consciousness. So I, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it. You've, you've probably come across it. That's I'm, exactly. I'm not what good it with does. homework. I'm, I'm sure I, if anyone's listened to any of these previous episodes, <laughs> I've said it multiple times. I'm just I love this shit. I'm just not good with yeah. homework. Well, and never see, have been. And I, you know, at the time I was going into it, 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 it wasn't. You know, it didn't feel like home. It, it was just like I. Yeah. It was a language to help me understand myself. Uh, but uh, you know, I could I could walk us through that one just like I did the the other one. I love it. And, yeah, the, uh, the concept is really far out there because the, uh, my discussion about it essentially culminated in us discussing. Uh, like I asked, where do you think we're at? And we're like pr- pretty much around seven. Like we're like oh, pushing. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. like we're kind of we're we're coming up very much closer to the crown chakra. I mean, yeah, maybe it, not in our lifetime, but give this shit another like two hundred years and what we. I mean, I really love the term posthuman uh, or, or like transhumanism. Transhumanism is a good one too. too. That's why I like yeah, you know, just future in general. Like uh, you know, future evolution. Yeah, like uh, that's why. It, the concept of trans and non-binary is like, you know, how could you not support somebody that's, you know, literally that falls somewhere in their identity that's more mm-hmm. nuanced than like the sort of like outdated uh, model that we have. Well, that's this, this that's binary what, model. Well, see, of and that's and the, it's funny that it's called, you know, we say binary because to me that form of thinking heavily correlates with the second circuit and second circuit thinking tends to try to do that, put things into boxes, black and white with us or against us. Yeah. You know, it tries to make it like that. So that's kind of the concept it is, is, uh, is, is not only trying to simplify it, but also put it in that stark contrast, this or that, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, totally like this whole concept of like future evolution and where we're going. Um, and, and, and just in the same sense, the eight circuit model is so, so important to me. Like I, you know, I preach it all the time. I meditate on it all the time. Um, and, and even, even back in the beginning, when I was first starting to understand evolution, that's one of the first things that comes up. Well, one of the first things that came up was like, wow, we are still like cavemen in a lot of ways. Like we still have that animal in us. But then I started to really ask that question, like, where are we going? You know, yeah. that, that was a bit, or where, where are we at? Where are we going? Um, and, and, uh, in, in terms, yeah, the eight circuit model is great. Uh, I kind of want to walk through it. 
just, just for reference. Have at it, have at it, buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll be simple. Mi casa su casa. I'll, I'll, I'll be concise, but I think I think. Dude, be, you are really incredibly fun. concise. I'm so I'm so excited to have you on the podcast and be able to discuss this. It's going swimmingly, yeah, and I also <laughs> love your input, dude. Th- yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to express this, <laughs> especially yeah. because, like, what I was gonna say, I recorded this 30 minute session where I went through all these, mm-hmm. and then I realized I didn't record it. Oh no! <laughs> hey man, I've but, been there, man. But I, I was like, I'm honestly afraid all the time that some shit's fucked up on here. Yeah, and that's, then, that's, like, that's, that's I'm, actually... I'm like checking to make sure that like <laughs> yeah. that this is still live, and I guess if you're checking to see like looking for some green lights over here, like yeah, sure. man, I gotta look for the fucking green. But light. at the end of the day, we can always recreate this, like you know, absolutely. I, we because these are things that are all part the conversations of us. we've already had preceding this that I it's, wish there was some shit really just an, yeah exactly it's just an echo of it, but that's you know it makes it all all the all the better that we're that we get a little deeper every time. Yeah, absolutely, but. So eight, so eight circuits, yeah, man, pop off. So anyway, yeah, eight circuits. Um, the the first circuit is basically um, it, it's our basic drive to um, like to eat to self preserve. It's kind of like it's very much the root chakra. It's based like preservation. They uh, they associate it with like when you're a baby and you're just being taken care of, almost like a womb state, kind mm-hmm. of like nurturing, cuddling, that kind of thing. Like uh, there is some like sexual element to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like, it's like a looking at a Freudian model. It's kind of like your, your psychosexual relationship with like your, uh, with your parent of the opposite sex sort yeah. of. Um, so that's like our fundamental, just core primal animal drive. Yeah. And then w- the second circuit then becomes uh, how we compete for that. It, it, that's where the territorial element comes to play. It's like, like you want to fuck your mother, kill your father, kind of thing. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if if you know, if fuck your mother is is one, yeah. then then the kill your father, the the in, the other part of the Oedipus or Electra complex would be the circuit two. It's about the competition, the war, um, that kind of thing. And you see that in nature. You see these first two circuits heavily in nature. You see the animals just trying to get food and, and reproduce, and then you see them kind of competing and this kind of thing. So those are those are heavily prevalent circuits in nature and in all animals. Uh, and, and of course there are also, well, I'll get into that later. There, there's also drugs that are associated with each one. Morphine or heroin or, or things that are just pure pleasure yeah. are, are the first circuit. And things like, uh, bar, uh, I think barbiturates and like depressants and alcohol are the second circuit. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Yeah. Like, I've often actually thought about that, that, mm-hmm. you know, I mean like personally, like I've really enjoyed opiates but I can't say that they've really like sort of, they've really, I can't say they've, uh, what's the word I'm like, like for? enlighten you in any way? Yeah. Or? Like I, I, I can't really say I've gotten very far. I, I've, I've pushed myself. I, I haven't had a lot of self explorative sort of sensations right. past just the euphoria. Of being and that's it. And that's why I even, I even kind of walk away from same with alcohol. Yeah, and that's why, like you know, with my approach to substances in general, I'm not really drawn to anything that's just pure pleasure because I understand that that's what it is. And in a lot of ways, because yeah. it is a drug, fuck me right up, daddy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me that big boy shit. <laughs> like, you, you know that you know that's what it's gonna do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what it takes you to is that first circuit. Just and that's why it's so addictive and so destructive because yeah. it's just that it's that absolute. It's the incubator. It's yeah. the womb. Let me go back to the womb. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so so those circuits. And if, if we talk about evolution, like I said, the first two circuits are seen in most animals. That's kind of a big part of of that's the 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 approach and then the runaway. Uh, you know uh, that in nature. So what where it gets interesting is we look at the third circuit. So the third circuit is considered really, it's about logic, it's about rationalism, it's about mental mapping, it's about being able to kind of like conceptualize your environment. And it's really interesting to actually talk in terms of mathematics. We talk about the first circuit, and then we talk about the second circuit, which is like an approach and mm-hmm. run away from. And then the third circuit adds a dimension. It's a third dimension. Yeah. So it's all about navigating the, the, the dimensional world. And of course, a lot of animals have to pro- they have to process their environment and how to like move around and stuff like that. But this also seems to be illuminating the momentum of, you know, sort of our adolescence. Like this is the part where uh, ah, so yes. like 13, 14 years old, where you start to develop this like little rudimentary identity and become ah. aware of the fact that you need an identity. Yes. And then, then things get more complicated. Complicated in middle school, you start it's feeling the, funny, you start your hair to, growing in funny. <laughs> you know. well, well, even I would say at that level, when you start to hear like puberty, that's almost more of like fourth circuit. Okay, but third circuit is honestly whenever we first begin to kind of walk and navigate the environment, yeah. and it's also involved. Third circuit is language. We start to 
conceptualize the world and, and, and it's like, it's about mental mapping. And, okay. I, and so it, it's kind of in there. And so honestly it happens very, very early on. Like let's say that there's like a kid and you know, they're like, I want food and they pitch a fit and they're just like, you know, if the parent says no, then they're just like pitching a fit. They're all second circuit competitive. Yeah. But then over time through whatever means they realize like, Oh, you know, um, it's not all about me. You know, yeah. It's not all about me. That's that's kind of where you get outside of like that yeah. that local, and you realize that there's other things going on. So honestly, the the conditioning and the yeah. the imprinting of the of the circuit, the third circuit, starts to happen pretty early on as we first begin to learn language. Yeah. So it's it's pretty early on. It, it makes me want. I I got this vision of like installing like an old school. Sierra like computer game or some shit and this is when like you see all like the data maps for like the models that they use throughout like the level design and shit yeah you're watching the installation go by the the bar <laughs> yeah like, yeah you're just, like, like putting all the rudimentary dude, structures I, on everything I fucking love any reference that like looks at ourselves as like robots or like looks <laughs> yeah. at reality like a game it's so fun to we're, think we're about just, like, we're just a some... 90s point and click at the end of the day yeah hey, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's why I like vaporwave so much you know that's what I'm saying it's like that 90s nostalgia <laughs> fuck yeah um, so for circuit so um well one thing i want to mention real quick too is you talked about how we're looking at it in terms of the entire evolution of of humanity and animals but you also see it in our in our own lives as we grow from baby so that's a great thing that i like to look at like how our individual lives parallel the entire course of evolution and that's something we'll get into later. Yeah. This is this is going in a very magical well, direction. Fractals, I mean, fuck yeah. Man. We'll get into the tarot we'll and, and some, we'll get into some some tarot and Kabbalah perhaps in a minute. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, but uh, so so third circuit is that it's that whole science, logic, rationalism. And if you look at if you look at human history, you know we we see that humans and like primates and monkeys started to develop some some like lang- language and some like you know um, some like conceptual understanding of reality and that kind of thing even on into more uh, modern times where we have this scientific revolution so this yeah. whole thing's happening uh, and then we look at the four circuit so the four circuit is associated with uh, it's more of like a tribal identity it's like morality laws kind of ties into some religious kind of things. It ties into sexuality. Of course, Mm -hmm. there is that kind of first circuit sexuality, which is also associated with like feeding and stuff like that. But this is more of like a, more of like a bonding kind of sexuality, more of like a, uh, like an intimate, perhaps I kind of like some love and the drug, I was going to say the drug associated with the third circuit is like, uh, like uh, amphetamines, like coffee, caffeine, cocaine, all that shit. Sounds analytical. Yeah, that's what it does to you, you know, yeah. and, and uh, like Adderall and stuff makes you like very just like, you know, mm-hmm. organized and stuff. Um, but the four circuit is associated with ecstasy. So it's very interesting because it, cause it deals with, with um, they say that it's, it's sexuality, but it's about ecstatic, like it's about ecstasy. Um, but that's also balanced with, like I said, tribal morality and mm-hmm. law. So it makes me heavily think about religion because religion tries to reconcile these two things like this, like sexual pleasure, but also like tribal morality and, and, uh, and, and this kind of thing. And, and this, the circuit is not totally perfect. Um, I, I kind of, I kind of associate creativity here as well. Um, you know, as we try to map this circuit onto the chakras, I kind of try to say, I try to draw some parallels and say that the four circuits kind of has to deal with imagination and creativity and stuff perhaps. Yeah. Um, but so that, so that's, those are the main four. And it's interesting to note that there is a kind of a divide here that, that we consider the, these main four to be kind of where we're at now in a collective sense. Okay. And, and that's also kind of like what most people go through. They kind of go to four, they have children and then they kind of just, yeah. that's the cycle. But then there is this concept that, that like, there's this concept that there's like a kind of a leap that happens from four to five. Um, which is perhaps, you know, we were talking about our future evolution, perhaps, mm-hmm. or, you know, a lot of us have our individual experiences, uh, that kind of help us catapult. And interesting, interestingly enough, the fifth circuit is associated with cannabis. Really? Yeah. And in the fifth circuit, I, a lot of times I like to associate it with the, the heart or the green chakra because it's a place of, it's a, it's a place of Zen. It's a place of being kind of like spaced out and, and, uh, and, and it's all about balance. And I mean, it really, to me, it's heavily like, I just it's like cannabis. It's just like, it's like that spiritual cannabis high is heavily what I associate with that kind of, with that realm. And, um, so that's kind of what the fifth circuit is. Yeah. And one of the, th- the things that's very interesting as we talk about our evolution, uh, Timothy Leary talked about how because it's a feeling of, of, of being spaced out and this kind of like these big far out kind of conceptual notions that he talked about this circuit is preparing us for, for leaving the earth. 
And and I told you that there was a divide between the four and the and the upper four, and perhaps that's what it is. Is we leave we literally leave the 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 terrestrial. We leave the earth. Well, we leave the old paradigms behind. Yeah, and they call it the, at least they, the practice of. Them, they yeah. call it the rapture circuit because really? of that too. So it's very it kind of plays in. And you, what's very 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 interesting is that Christians and people who are heavily like they're kind of limited in the fourth circuit. They look at they, they talk about the rapture and they talk about heaven, but some of us who have been to the fifth circuit, we're like, heaven is like <laughs> yeah, it's like here, right, it's right here, <laughs> it's here, it's here. The rapture is here. Heaven is possible, you know. Yeah. And so this, this kind of thing is, but but yet, as we see, we're not yet able to permanently exist there. Some people try to be potheads and they try to exist in that circuit permanently but we're not ready yet we we have to kind of bring what we learn from there and exist in these like lower terrestrial planes for now are you familiar with the bodhisattva Mm -mm. um i wasn't either i've actually heard the name thrown around a bunch but never bothered to look it up but the bodhisattva is uh i'm not even going to pretend to know what (laughs) like where where, what i'm pretty sure it's buddhist it sounds it sounds like hindu or buddhist yeah yeah. it's eastern it's eastern like i said man i'm not good with my homework Uh, but (laughs) The Bodhisattva, the idea is that these are these are individuals that have been on the precipice of enlightenment. These are, you know, these are individuals that have had contact with the divine, with that one unifying consciousness and that are aware of its existence, but have decided to not go the full route, to not devote themselves ah. to silent meditation, to stay behind yes. to help help Others. the rest of us yes dude that's me <laughs> yeah. yeah and I, I think i like i love the concept um and again i'm not gonna like go into any detail about like what what my take on it is because i'm not too much familiar with the philosophy past the basics which are you know it's 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 a form of that universal consciousness that god consciousness christ consciousness yes. whatever you want to call it yeah that has like been like okay now in in this context I need to. I need to. I need, I need to be here for everybody else. That's me. That, Try that, to guide people to this. That's why I can't get mad. I I can't get too upset at fundamentalist evangelicals because I'm like, your heart's in the right place. You're trying to be the bodhisattva. Exactly. You want, but, but it's exactly. coming. Like you're kind of being a fuck about it because you're still holding on to your old paradigms and like, yeah. it, you you have this like watered down conception of Christ. Right. Yeah. We, we try to we try to exercise our understanding with where they're at, but also like say like you know, push a little bit. Yeah. So I mean. That whole, I mean, you mentioned the, you said the fifth circuit, right? The one that you, right. you personally associate with cannabis. Um, that's why I don't, like, I know people that smoke weed, um, but are like really averse to psychedelics, mm-hmm. which I can't be too upset. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a big jump. It's not like, I, I really am not into like offering people psychedelics on a whim. No. Because it's like, I, I, especially if I don't know you. You understand. Yeah, you understand. I'm just like, just this the, could the, be a, she could change your whole fucking life. I know. Yeah. Um, and that being said, cannabis is a mild psychedelic. Like, are you familiar with how uh, McKenna suggested using cannabis? Like, he, he said something along the lines of like, you should like abstain for months at a time. Yeah, he, he was all about going hard. He and then just like, go like, you know, the equivalent <clears throat> of fucking five I, I, grams I kind of, of I kind of believe in that because otherwise, yeah, otherwise you kind of just you build tolerance and you lose the magic of it. I, I'm all about this, like creating this like experience and this ritual where you maximize the benefit. I think, I think that's why the anxiety that's coupled with cannabis is like so detrimental to some people and it mm-hmm. turns a lot of people off. Uh, they might be smoking an indica when they would probably flourish with a sativa or some shit like that. That's interesting. But usually when there's that anxiety, when you get caught into that introspection mode, it's, you get the ability to sort of view, view yourself and the world around you from, uh, I'm not going to say a more objective perspective. I would say like more of an objective, a, a detached yeah. kind of like a, I like to think like I, I do some guided meditations and I say like, let's like, you know, just kind of float out of ourselves and like look down and observe ourselves objectively. Yeah. yeah. So and then, that's so. like the body, like the lower chakras, like the lower circuits, whatever you're you want to call it. kind of, yeah, detaching from Yeah. Those. Like Absolutely. they don't, they don't like that. And I, I ah, discussed yes. this, I discussed this a little, uh, uh on the last episode that we did too, we were just going into it, but my experiences with the astral, uh, personally have been in sleep paralysis. My, you know, like, like, like sleep paralysis does not feel good. Like Mm -hmm. it, you have a definitive sensation of like being like held down or, you know, you can't move your extremities. You're paralyzed. I mean, it's not good, but, um, 
every time I've gotten it lately, uh, I've anticipated it. And I've also like had this sensation of being aware of like what's going to happen, mm -hmm. like, uh, and being aware of what's happening, being lucid during it. And it's manifested as a sensation of annoyance rather than terror. Mm. And I had a breakthrough the last time because, like, the moment that I, like, refused to give into the terror of, like, paralysis, like, I had some really, really vivid, like, images, like, really far out there. Like, it was, like, trip, trip level, like, right, right. vivid imagery, astral imagery, faces, third eyes opening up and shit like wow. that. Like, really wild. And, like, and that was, like, the moment that I made the conscious decision to, like, just have no fear yes and yes and i think it really yes. is the sensation of like the body of like your more immediate material form ah, and, just and, and, sort and, of they it does not like being associated with yeah. the, what it can't quantify which well, is and like that's the, it like, in, in order to detach the cosmos <laughs> in order to detach from the self it, it almost requires a sort of ego death, ego death. Yeah. yeah and that's absolutely like this whole realm of you know i've studied this a lot you know both in myself and my my high, my cannabis experiences and my psychedelic experiences and i see how it affects some other people and like you say we see these anxieties involved but then you also said that there seems to be this point of of surrender or or like yeah or like it's like a surrender it's like it's like to me the way i describe it is like anxiety is like what if i die like what if i die oh my god you know but then it's almost like what if yeah. you know it's like it's okay mm -hmm. and then you and then that's it and, and what's so interesting is that if, again if we look at like the, the lower four circuits and the upper five and how like you can smoke cannabis, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go there. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you do smoke, it kind of is like a, a pressure to go there. Mm -hmm. But you ultimately have to jump over that abyss. And I think that's that's kind of what that abyss is, is a type of ego death, is, yeah. a, is an ability to kind of look beyond yourself. And same with the chakras, with the heart chakra. You know, the lower circuits are all kind of about your local perspective and your ego and, and your like material yeah, kind of thing. The macro. But then this becomes this becomes the love for everything. I, I remember one. I remember honestly what I consider my breakthrough cannabis experience, um, and and it was just it was absolutely like an opening of the the heart chakra and the fifth circuit. It was just love. It was just like an and, and they also call it. Uh, they say that you're able to develop an aesthetic appreciation for things versus you know typically. In our ego, we always measure things in terms of how it relates to us. It's like, okay, well, you're another person, and like, this is a thing which does this. But once you kind of detach from the ego, then everything, everything just becomes magical. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so that's kind of what this detachment allows you to do. You feel do. like a fucking Jedi. You know what I mean? Like, you feel like you just became aware of the Force, and you have these. Yeah, not, not this immediate abilities to like you know make things levitate and shit, but like really, I mean that's kind of like a big aspect of the magical path. I is wish being able. I mean, you can really see it in conversations with people when you get better at reading folks, and when you get better at like maybe knowing how to influence, or maybe I mean it sounds a little nefarious, but to appeal to what you detect in somebody else. Like uh, like a lot of people don't see that as like a. F don't recognize it. That that's kind of like a lot of what magic really is. I, that's what I was about to say. We're we're, we're starting to kind of we're we're starting to kind of get closer to where we're at right now, and these kind of the the type of magic we're trying to do, and how we influence others, and, and so and so forth. Um, I definitely think once you're able to detach from your ego, of course, you're, it kind of makes you a lot more empathic. You're able to kind of say like, well, I'm just a person. They're just a person. Like, we're just, we're the same. Yeah. And so and you're a part of me. And it's like, I love you. You know, it's like, I'm trying to help you. But, you know, a lot of people who, who don't quite understand that can feel all kind of ways about it. They can feel like very, most people... I, I've run into this situation a lot of times where I'm so transparent and open and I'm usually trying to probe into somebody because I'm like, people don't like you. Oh no, no. People are just like, they're like, you know, you don't know me. And like, you, you think you know me and they, they, they say that you're arrogant and God complex and they think you're being manipulative and just all this stuff. Fuck yeah, man. Like and, and so, my friend was telling me the other day he was at work and, uh, he had a close friend of his pass away. It was like a month and some change ago, maybe two months ago. A close friend of his passed away uh, abroad. They live in Colorado. And they were at work. And it just happened recently. Like a childhood friend. Like somebody used to hang out with every day back like high school, middle school, right. some shit like that. And one of the guests at his uh, bar that he's working at was asking, like, how's your day going? And then like he was just transparent. He was like, you know, man, it's actually not going so hot. You know, I'm not doing so great. I had a yeah. close friend of mine passed away. And then like the dude was like turned off like immediately. <laughs> you did like, yeah, because like he, he thought it was just a formality. He didn't right. expect that somebody would actually be like, be willing to share what they're going right. through. 
and yeah. like it, like that's that's just the sentiment of like like it's just a formality at that yeah, point, I, right? I like you don't really yeah. quite care how it's how just, their day is going. It's just something we do. It's a cultural. Uh, like Leary called it like he said like it's a password. You know, we we say things like that, like the club password. It, it, our culture, <laughs> our culture. I it, love that, dude. That's one of the biggest things. One of the biggest first breakthroughs. Whenever you kind of ego detach and you kind of like, especially with psychedelics, you start to realize it like that. Like we have so many ways that we behave and interact with each other. Mm-hmm. That's just like it's just automatic. It's just like this weird kind of routine we've got into. Fuck yeah, man. Even like. I still get nervous when I ever have anybody over, even if it's you or somebody come over to yeah. track people that I know, like even my fucking roommates, they're like yeah. family to me, but still there's like, you know, when somebody walks into a room, yeah. they've been at work all day. There's always like that, like there's that looming sensation. I want to be how, how to go. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> I, again, I always love, I always love a fucking love. Like I said, any reference to like human humans as like robots. Cause we're just yeah, like, like, how <laughs> was your day? You know, like nice to meet you. You know, like working my name hard is or hardly working. <laughs> yeah. It's just like we, we, we get in this, like such an automated and robotic sense where, and, and like you said, like, you know, even though we've been able to take our mask off and have this like deep connection, yeah. we, we go back out there. And this is what I talked about. Like whenever you have bigger parts, parties or like more events where we're, mm-hmm. you, you see people have their mask on and that's the, that's the thing about it it's almost like a toxic thing if someone's got their mask on then it's like ah, fuck you know I've got to like put my, I gotta put mine on it kind of reminds me of some eyes wide shut shit like yes. maybe those I fucking love that movie, man. Big you know, that ritual movie. they did? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that right well, here in the park. But that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, it's like those are the kind of social interactions. You know, when, That's why I like to be alone a lot, because I can just take my mask off and just Fuck be at yeah. peace. And those are the types of social interactions I crave, is where we can all just like come together and almost have like a ritual where we just say, like, hey, we're all just going to take our mask off. Absolutely. And, and I've been having this vision of like a, almost maybe like a cartoon or something or like an animation that I want to do. Where like some like people that, that seem kind of normal, and they come in and it is almost like an eyes wide shut thing. It's almost like a weird like <laughs> demonic thing. But that's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. It's like it's a ritual yeah. to where they just they like you know they they take off their mask and you and they're all open and vulnerable. And, and that's what's so interesting about it is that a lot of a lot of times it has this like satanic culty connotation. But at the core, that's what it is. Is we just want to be open. We just, we just want to express who we are, and, and so it's all about love. And, and that's why I say, even though it's a primal satanic energy, we're keeping it in, in, in balance with our Jesus or our well, godly nature. This is what really uh, is it really really fascinates me and excites me about the momentum of our future. You know, the way that we met, uh, the way that our relationship has been since we met has just been a very, like, I remember our first conversation, it, like, I was getting chills just sitting there because we were at this venue, and we're sitting in almost this, like, oh, that was, outdoor. It was like a little circle. Yeah, we're in this man. little circle formation. And, like, we, you know, we had traded some concepts about, you know, like, magic and, like, yeah. esoteric philosophy, yeah. hermetic philosophy. You know, we would sort of connected digitally over that. And then finally, you know, like, kind of met up in this public forum with, uh, surrounded by a lot of our contemporaries, a lot of people at this venue, right? Yeah, yeah. But it just felt like... Um, like, are you familiar with the term palaver? Mm-mm. It's used, I think it's an actual word. It's used a lot in the Gunslinger series by uh, Stephen King. But it's like, like palaver is like, like you're breaking bread or you're sitting around a fire. Oh, like, it's like, a, like a ritual time. kind of thing. Or, yeah, or like but, a, a, a tribal, primal instinct almost. You, it's, it's like, it's like. Communion. It, it's like this almost like archaic description of dis- discussing, ruminating, uh, yeah. theory crafting, if that's yes. what you want to fucking call it. I love it. Oh, so that's, that's really what it felt like. You know, we're, it's like, and I get this, this degree of familiarity around people that I have not known that long, but it's yes. sort of like, like, yes, I don't know whether it's not, I, my more romantic self likes the concept of a past life. Like we've known each other before, but right. I, I'm starting to think a big element of it is like, you know, you're bathed in the same water, so to speak. Right. Like right. you, like you have recognized, like at least a taste of the great mystery mm. that you know we are here temporarily. You know we are made of the same fucking stuff that stars are. <laughs> yeah. We're all bound yeah. by that. Absolutely. And that, like you know, this this existence is so much so much more colorful and fascinating the, and yes. confusing God, than the, anybody the, else could have ever anticipated. Absolutely. So that's what really excites me about like the momentum that's going on. Is that, like I'm yes. meeting more and more people every day that are just like, what's going on? And like, how was your day? And really fucking want to know. Yeah. And people we're, that can like, l- like it's a process too. It's like, you know, we even get a little bit more comfortable every time that we spend time together. Right. But like the, the, I just find that people are seeking that out. 
They're, oh, they're yeah. seeking people out that you can take our mask off in front of. Whether which, they realize it or not, most yeah. people don't even kind of realize, they're not even tapped into it. Yeah. But for those of us who have kind of like, see, you know, taken our mask off and seen that, yeah. that's absolutely what we look for. And like you're saying, this whole concept of like, it can there can be someone I've known for years or my whole life and we can be on this like kind of certain like relationship but then we meet someone who's like like you said has had this kind of like dip into the mystery yeah. or has taken their mask off and we're just like yes like you, you know I, we're think, just, I think that's the familiarity because i think you take you take a part of the macro you take a part of the all back with you absolutely and you and you, you wear it on 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 your sleeve or at least a lot of people do it's, it's hard not to yeah it's hard not to like uh, just be able to like talk about intimate things around strangers yeah. it's hard not to take a take a bit of that freedom our, of our that. souls are absolutely like just teeming like to just express and yeah. so for like this whole act of repressing it and holding it in it, that's why it creates a lot of neurotic behavior because it's Fuck just yeah. like we're trying to just like hold it in and hide who we are yeah, but it's trying to get uh, out yeah we're just, <laughs> all we want to do is just be like just chill and like just love <laughs> it's so easy but yet you see so many people are just struggling with it and stuff and that's why you know and like you said that's the importance of that's the importance of how destiny brought us together that was our purpose that's the the awesome thing about the momentum of this collective movement about how we're all starting to kind of we feel the same things and we're coming together and like you said everybody feels these things and we know that we see that in everybody we see that energy in everybody so it's kind of like what what it, it becomes our purpose and it kind of pushes us to be the the leaders of it you know yeah. to to say hey like you know I'm the bodhisattva exactly exactly yeah. we we went and dipped and then we brought it back because what we ultimately want is to be able to share it and yeah. and, and and we can live by example we can even though it's hard even though it's hard to do what i seek to ultimately do is to be able to take my mask off in front of people and just be like this is me yeah and it's hard be, it's not it's not it's not the easiest it, thing. it's not it takes a lot of practice and uh, there are you know like i think i think psychedelics can perhaps play a part but mm -hmm. of course it's easy you know it's easy to, to be alone and do it mm -hmm. it's easy to do it with people who you know you can trust but i think ultimately we want to like i said live by example and, and i think that's the the key to success with a lot of people like you see a lot of musicians and celebrities or, or you know artists mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. of all kinds moguls too yeah almost Entrepreneurs. and almost anything it's just like that's what they're doing it's just if they're, they're just like you know this is just me like right. I, and, and it kind of goes back to that concept of uh it's similar to the concept of living by your virtues like truth and love and just living in love yeah. but it's the actual manifestation of that it's like live it and that's one of the things that really that really hit me hard i remember on some of my early psychedelic experiences is like not only are we just we just want to express all this stuff um, and it's understandable that we should kind of hold some of it back because yeah. of how, just for the nature of reality. But, you know, for me, the whole concept of holding love in, it was like, you know, I have all this love to give and express. It's like, I don't want to hold that back, yeah. you know? And so, and so that's, that's what it's about. You know, life for me is about expressing that love and therefore it, it's about, there are obstacles in the way of that. Mm -hmm. So it's about kind of dealing with, with those obstacles. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Um, all that in relation to, uh. The progression of the circuits. So we were on five, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. What's going on with six? Oh man, give it to me, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, so, so the fifth is kind of this place of of kind of. I like to think of it as like a. Um, the first circuit was like a singular point. Yeah. And then we kind of got into these other dimensions, and I almost like to think that the fifth circuit is almost another kind of like, like look at. I don't. You know, we can't see it on camera, but there's mm. a mandala. There's. It's like a. It's a mandala. It's kind of the center. The fifth circuit is kind of the center. But then from that center, as we get into the sixth circuit, is all the complexity and the chaos that's all around. And a lot of times what I associate with the, just some associations with the sixth circuit to kind of help express how I understand it yeah. is like, uh, I, you know, synchronicity as Carl Jung called it, or destiny, it's kind of like this force of, of how reality works. And, and, and like, for example, you mentioned earlier, like us meeting each other and how it seemed to be like this, like destiny was like pushing us together for this reason. Mm -hmm. It's like this kind of meaning and causality that's out there behind everything. So naturally it's tied in with some ideas about God or, or universe or, or whatnot. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it's also kind of associated with, with similarly the, the chaos or the void or it, just like the complexity. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that. If, if, if I can interrupt for a sure, second, yeah. my own interpretation of like what synchronicity is when we uh, observe it in our day-to-day -day lives, 
whether you meet somebody new or maybe you have somebody that's talking about some shit that you just talked about. Right. You know? You're like, yeah, I was, just, I was just talking about like, it. Like, you know? I've often drawn the analogy between, like, visionary art. You see, like, uh, uh, like an Alex Gray or a Jonathan Solter, or one of these fucking masters that have found this way of, like, you know, producing these really vivid depictions of structure within chaos, using yes. chaos to put structure. And I, yes. I, I see a lot of that in synchronicity as kind of like, that's like the, that's like the cultural analogy of that. Like yeah. th- this all seems scattered and unrelated and chaotic, but, but the, there's, there's a, clearly a correlation. Yes. Between oh man. Them. I, I, that was something that kind of hit me recently was like this balance. You know, we talked earlier about like there's the chaos and then there's the kind of the, the order. Uh, but then there's this kind of reconciliation where, and my favorite word is complexity. Yeah. Because complexity seems to have both to get, it's like, it's got some like chaos into it, but there is like an underlying order. So I love like just that idea of complexity. Like, you know, a lot of people I think can get really anxious because they see how chaotic everything is. Fuck yeah. But once you see the underlying order and complexity and see that there is like some meaning to it, you, you are then able to, you're, 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 you're able to dance and appreciate in that, that chaos and that void, but also know that it's like, you're just, it's, you're a part of it and it's, yeah. And it's just, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> that's it. Like, see, and you understand as you get to this level of circuitry, it's like, we are almost at a loss of words. Like, it's just like, it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know, as we get to the third eye, so to speak, it's like, it becomes these things, yeah. these huge kind of untangible things that we're experiencing. So saying that your interpretation of, uh, this step in the circuits is, uh, kind of characterized by that chaos and order, like the marriage. Of those yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I typically think of it almost just as, as chaos or just the complexity, just all this information that's out there, all the relation, the complex relationships between everything. Mm-hmm. It's very much just like this everything kind of thing, just, yeah. you know, um, and, and what's, like honestly I don't even I don't feel that I've unlocked or been heavily in the higher circuits in the 7th or the 8th so for me yeah so for me from my perspective I kind of like it's really just like the 6th circuit kind of mush of all this you know this kind of thing happening it Uh, goes deeper though I know and and, and that's what that's what's really exciting about about my life and and, you know as we come as we take what we've learned up there and we come back down to the lower circuits and we're living life and we're and we're doing this kind of thing you know it's so exciting to to you know it's like the reason we're doing it is because we do at some point want to explore that but we don't want to get too detached you know not until we're ready uh but but just just from my perspective like I, i see it you know like i literally see it as like a like the seventh and eighth circuits seem to be this kind of like dmt induced like other realities <laughs> other timelines people call it dna consciousness i mean just all these crazy crazy out there concepts You're saying this is eighth circuit seventh and eighth roughly i mean i don't think like i said it's just kind yeah. of like like seventh may be like higher doses of, of lsd and other psych powerful psychedelics yeah um but definitely once you get up there there's these concepts of like ultimate unity and we're all related and and there's just like you know i mean i, I don't know well there, the, the, there's a couple people that are even uh still actively uh organizing kind of these uh talks and lectures and whatnot around the world they travel to different uh spots really promoting uh the legalization and propagation of entheogens as a way to mm-hmm. sort of bolster transhuman principles. Yes. And really it's sort of, uh, yes. there's this one dude uh, named Kalindi E. I should, I'll send you a couple of links, man. He's way far out there. Really fascinating dude. Um, but he's talking about taking like fucking 20, 25 <laughs> grams of like psilocybin mushrooms and like, like sort of going into deep hardcore meditation with like really rare, uh, like crystals and whatnot. Wow. And like meeting up, like, like trans entities local, and no stuff. like meeting up with other people in around, the world. around the world that are in the different parts of the uh, world and meeting up with them in a particular space and I, shit. D- I definitely you know i believe i buy it dude i know i'm, I'm totally there like these, <laughs> concepts of, like these concepts of, of telepathy I'll, I'll or put five down on that <laughs> going into other realms given the stories i've heard in my own in my own experiences at the at the kind of the 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 foothills of it so to speak yeah. i definitely believe that that's out there you know especially when, you, when when we talk about like dmt encounters and experiences especially whenever you hear testimonies from people like terrence mckenna yeah. and uh, and that kind of thing like i i'm excited and like you said you know these people are also trying to um they're trying to bring 
this they're trying to legalize these things they're trying to kind of build ceremonies around it they're trying to get the information out there and guide people yeah. that's all in the effort because i think what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish a foundation so that we can perhaps like permanently ascend to that realm i think that's what we're what we're trying to do yeah or at least trying to like maintain the momentum of like moving deeper yeah. and deeper like that's what really like i think politics is really going to manifest itself in a really particular way as far as the how we divvy up uh the sort of how 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 we divvy up how free consciousness is going to get right. free will and consciousness is only going to get freer from now on oh, i yeah. feel like and oh, I'm, yeah. i really am convinced of that regardless of whatever like political movements will take the foothold right now we're seeing like the sort of like this sort of like faux baby fascism of the left almost oh, was yeah. that not even baby fascism it's just like there's aspects of it that are like entirely fascist right and it's like I think we are going to see a restructuring of like the concept of morality and what is right or wrong. Absolutely. Like you see a lot of people, uh, e even down to like sexual harassment allegations, or maybe there's some person who's like a prominent intellectual who may have like some who was at the same dinner table as somebody who's like associated with the alt right, and then it's like, oh fuck this guy, demonize this person. This person. Well, see, that's the, that's the second circuit. Like, yeah, it's like if you're you're with us or against us, if you tolerate, then you must be with them. But it'll evolve, and it's gonna go. It's it, it's it's gonna be in flux. Back, the right will be in some degree of power again. Uh, yeah, you know, we will see. I mean, we're seeing an element of it now with the current administration. Um, another thing that this guy Kalind E talks about too is like, uh, utilizing psychedelics. Uh, to keep up with AI, to keep up yes. with like, with like, kind of like how quantum everything's going to become at the next sense. I, that's, think, that's, I feel like that's a dumb way to, no, no, to, 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 to phrase it, but that's within the realm, man. Like, yeah. Cause as, as, you're uh, dealing with like quantum philosophy almost like your brain. Like, I think it's part of the reason why personally, I don't remember a lot of my experiences, like in those deep trance states when you're on like several hits of clean LSD and you can't even see what's going on anymore because your visions are too vivid. Right. Like those, I barely remember what was going yeah, on. Like, just, I remember in, key in, in, parts of it. Right. But there's a bit of a fugue state of you like... You get like impressions and energy, but it's like... I, I so can't really, much I can, information. Well, that's what I'm saying because like we, we almost can't retain it because our brain has to, in order to retain something, it kind of has to have like a symbolic conceptual third circuit understanding. Yeah. And a lot of things happen in that place that, that are kind of hard to bring down. Yeah. As much as we try to develop a psychedelic language and art to kind of get up there, um, we're not quite there yet. But that brings in a great point, and this is something I'm surprised we haven't gotten to yet, is this mm -hmm. whole, is how we are uh, symbiotically evolving yeah. with technology. Fuck and, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's a huge realm for me. Like we've talked about all this magic and all this other stuff. But to me, this is almost like this whole other realm, which is about like the future and sci-fi. And, and I'm a computer scientist. So it's like programming, artificial intelligence. And to me, what I kind of see happening, I, I've expressed it in some ways, is almost like a uh, uh, an emergence of three ways between ourselves, nature, and technology. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, and, and psychedelics are kind of like a bridge between us and nature and technology is kind of like a bridge between like all of them. And it's just like, <laughs> you know. but, um, uh, yeah, man, that, that's, that's almost like a whole other dimension to talk about that. Well, kind of no, I mean, I'm interested in it too, because I also wanted to, you know, bring, bring your, uh, Bring your alias into the mix. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like this is like part two. Like maybe we can tell this is like the we were like talking magic. We got here and now we're like, <laughs> dude, it's wonderful because midway through this discussion, I was sort of like, there's a certain part in each episode where you can maybe begin to see like the structure of it. And it's almost like the tarot. You know what I mean? There's like these like there's these like different pockets of things that we're exploring, but they're also interconnected in this weird way to some other Yo, symbology dude. that. But yeah, man, let's let's uh let's uh. Um, Okay, let's 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 transition, and, and, I'll, and I'll do it. <laughs> let's pivot. I'll do it because you know we talked about the eight. So we went through the eight circuits just now, and and just almost as a kind of a future rumination. Um, yeah. I see like we see the the chakras, and then we see how the eight circuits are a little bit more complex. And then I mentioned like to me what I want to study more, and what's even what adds an even another dimension to it is the Kabbalah, mm -hmm. and the tarot is kind of associated with that. The, the tarot is associated with that whole evolution, both in our lives and in the entire course of humanity. Yeah, yeah. But you also talked about like what you were just describing, how we're kind of moving between these nodes and kind of going all over the place. Um, that's kind of what the Kabbalah helps to express. Yeah. So at the, I don't even know that much about it yet, but that's kind of like at the verge of my magical understanding. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, that's kind of where we're at in terms of this like new, like technological kind of thing too. Yeah. So I really just wanted to say there was, there was a, 
it's a multitude of posts that you made once uh you know once we, we added each other on like facebook and shit on social media um and it's something i don't see enough of uh is that you had this like almost like reverence for the capabilities of connecting digitally with folks that I don't see in a lot of people. I see right. a lot of criticism. I see and a lot of like these aren't real relationships, you know. Right. Uh, like these are, you know, you know, like just for the sake of the audience, uh, your name on Facebook is Hermes Trismegistus. Um, and you post like a fucking madman, <laughs> like all the time. I, I take that. For, like I, I have to realize that there's some people out there that don't have a bunch of meme people added, so their feed is probably like 100 percent me. Just like fuck yeah, dude. Like okay, so like, <laughs> I was trying to find a post that you had made of the of the video of that dude snorting a line of coke. And he's just like, the, <laughs> yeah, just I love that. Head. That's a, that's a cult classic. That's gonna so be. A, good, I dude. love it. So fucking good. <laughs> but I didn't know where to get it. But I knew you had posted it the other day. So I, I was I was like, all right, let me go to this page and scroll. I was scrolling for like fucking seven minutes, dog. And then you had posted it like two days prior. And it's like, God damn. Yeah, so much content. See, I need so to, I need this. to, that reminds me, I need to start. I appreciate I need to start, it, dude. <laughs> but it's frustrating, but I appreciate it. I need to start hashtagging. I've often told people, I'm like, if you want entertainment, you can scroll my wall for fucking days, <laughs> weeks, who Kill knows? You can just, and I do it. That's, it's like, I almost go into this trance state where it's just like this flow of information. And it's just very, you know, it's like, oh, that's cool. Boom. Bah, like that. Bah, Boom. Bah, like bah, that. Bah. And it's like this whole, like I've been talking about this whole process of memification. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's great for us to be able to like you and me going in depth with these ideas and this very long form kind of thing. Yeah. But most people and even ourselves can't always be at this level. So it's great to have it just easily digestible little pockets of like mm -hmm. knowledge, you know, and like, yeah. you know, getting woke one little meme at a time <laughs> or, or, you know, just, just chilling and a good, a good piece of humor that, that brings us together. You this know? is what I'm saying. Like, this is always like coupled with some degree of like scrutiny or it has some sort of like, it has this <laughs> criticism tied to it. I, of being be like, there's, there's a triviality to it because of the platform. Yeah. And like you had made a post maybe, you know, a couple months in the, you know, us being like friends on social media and having met up a couple times, had some fucking wonderful conversations. You had said something like, like I fucking love Facebook. I love that. I can like keep up with y'all and that we can all sort of like connect to this degree and right. like keep each other updated and know what's going on in each other's lives. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it too. And there's nothing yeah. like hokey about it or no. being like, Oh, you should get off the fucking internet. My guy It's like, no, this is, it's, I've made a lot of meaningful connections. Absolutely. Like when uh, I went through my fucking breakup last year, like mm -hmm. I, I made a couple posts cause I was in between spots. And when I was in between spots, even like I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't even have enough money to buy food and shit. Yeah. And like uh, the unconditional love that I experience yes. from people that I don't spend a lot of time with, you know, that I don't see on a regular basis. Yep. Even people just like, dude, if you need a place to stay, hit me up. I'm telling if you, you man. need a fucking home cooked meal, hit me up. And that's people are, it's really love. powerful. As the community aspect, like I said, there everyone, everyone, there's so much love out there, and yeah. and and the power yeah. of the platform to bring us together like that and transfer information that way is awesome. Like I'm not trying to replace the, you know these kind of face to face relationships, no. but it just goes hand in hand with it um and it, like you're saying though i see a lot of a lot of fear with regards to technology and mm -hmm. new platforms and i think a lot of it is just unfamiliarity yeah. it's almost just like a, a monkey or a caveman like seeing like fire for the first time it's like oh you know like what that's new but then we like you know we see that the power and the potential of it and uh you know and that's that's what draws me in I, i'm almost like a, a technological evangelical i'm just like <laughs> i'm like preaching you know i I'm, love I'm, that <laughs> i'm all about like you know i'm all about like facebook and and simulations and games and uh um uh, and, and transhumanism about novelty you yeah. know this whole concept of like artificial intelligence and how that's going to transform the world and how how we're going to perhaps merge with technology um one of, one of the things i've been posting about like a lot of times i'll meet someone on facebook or i'll meet someone and uh we'll, we'll start to talk and, and we'll have this uh mm -hmm. we'll have this like conversation and uh and, and it'll kind of be like a traditional conversation it'll kind of be like oh hey how are you like you know uh is somebody here i think <laughs> pause yeah i was like well we'll, 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 we'll address that no, I, I want you to finish your point man for sure like, um i really want to talk more about this uh this uh, dichotomy between like you know sort of 
the material world and the virtual yeah yeah uh, you know half of it i guess and the, whole, the whole future element i was gonna say though uh there's there's this trend that i see with people with technology i think I, I don't remember if i finished this thought but i was saying uh with people they're afraid of technology in general uh, uh about you know all these new things about all this like transhumanism and all this kind of all this kind of stuff um but yeah for me i'm i'm very about it I don't remember where my place was. I remember I was talking about that. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I, I was saying I was gonna, I was gonna like pause it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's that's generally how it is for me. Like I, I'm always looking forward to all these, all the the technological uh, advancements that are on the frontier. I love getting into the, the whole like sci-fi element about it and imagining, you know, not not only imagining the technology itself, but how it's gonna manifest itself in every other part of society <laughs> and politics and so forth. This is something that I think about just in the way that you've like handled like Hermes Trismegistus as like your kind of alias online because like I was talking about earlier upstairs I've met people of complete different associations that have like no other associations to different groups of people and they all know you <laughs> like like I've, I've run to people all the time that know who you are yeah and that like like even if they don't know you or have never met you face to face like Hermes Trismegistus yeah that dude that's po oh, posting memes God, and shit yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking local meme dealer yeah. meme lord I, I, th I think I think I think <laughs> do you, I think part of it's just the fact that you know like we're we're of a similar nature and we attract the same kinds of people and we've been around this area and you know <clears throat> you know for me but like, you get around <clears throat> boy virtually that's yeah so like, a lot of it's just my natural history and different schools and stuff but then yeah a lot of it is this kind of recent you know within the past year or so this kind of effort to really you know I, I had my kind of underground phase and then it, it was just the whole effort of just like. I want to, I want to expand. I want to build community. I want to get my, I want to get myself and my ideas out there so that I can meet other people that are in that nature. And so we can just make stuff happen and live life. And, and, uh, the, the memeing has been a great platform to do that. You know, you were talking about the trajectory of this certain technology too, because I really believe, uh, I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to fuck with like virtual reality and VR. Ah, yes. Um, like this is really going to rear its head. I think another five, <clears throat> five years or something like that. Yeah. We'll have people that are like, I've even had friends that like s spend a certain amount of hours a week in virtual reality and have like mm. friends and shit that they meet up with and different yes. things with their avatars. And it's like, yes. I feel like the way that you've handled your online persona <clears throat> and the way that you are and the way that it's like, it's, it's a reflection of like some kind of archetype that like it's, like we're we're gonna get to a point to where we'll virtually be able to like manifest whatever we want. Yeah, like, well, to manifest relationships and to mm -hmm. to 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 sort of like adorn ourselves in some kind of like completely like virtual identity. And, and what I, the point I want to make is that it's already happening. Like just in, you know, I'm a big gamer. I'm a big nerd. Yeah, so you're, like you're doing it exactly. <laughs> like you know, it's so like I'm doing it on Facebook, but also like whenever you play a game or like I I literally I think a lot about that. Uh, that's one of the ideas that constantly goes through my head. It's kind of one of my like dreams or fantasies that I want to manifest is being able to. Live Live in like a game or a virtual world where we have more control and we can project ourselves however we want yeah. and we can just interact in all these fun ways. Like I've had so, so many beautiful moments in my life that have been like gaming experiences. They've been, they've been great social experiences to play and, and share that with other people. I've had some solo experience. Like we were just talking about Half-Life the other day and, yeah. and Half-Life just was one of those big games that just had, it took me to a magical place mm -hmm. that was just like a great atmosphere and it just, it felt real. Um, and, and, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of times we are really immersed in that. We experience that as kids. And I think we're really trying to, as we get older, we're still like nostalgic for that. And that's kind of where this whole, like this, that's a big part of the Facebook culture, you know? So we talked about two of my main groups that I've created and tried to kind of build. One is like the whole magical thing. Yeah. It's like the whole, you know, and that ties in with like psychedelics and all these esoteric ideas. But then this other one is kind of like this aesthetic vaporwave kind of you know you see all those pages on facebook with or, like the japanese characters and like the yeah. this, the space between the 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 characters like that whole aesthetic is kind of, that's what that is for me it's almost like a it's kind of like a longing for the past and like that 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 being a child and being immersed in all that magic and technology and games and those fictional worlds. Yeah. And then it's also like how we look forward to the future and we're looking at all the technology and the, the, the potential for that magic and fantasy in the future and how uh, it's also kind of got this sad boy element to it, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> it's got this like, 
like in, in the moment is like this kind of this kind of uh, sleepy Lisa with the fucking yeah yeah the, yeah the you, rain all you, you it's huge man it's a huge <laughs> artistic and cultural movement and that's kind of how I diagnosed it it's it's got the element of nostalgic for the past hope for the future but then this almost kind of like detached alienated existential kind of sad place uh in the meantime but yet it's a sense of comfort you know at the yeah. it's not necessarily like a sad place like i'm not like depressed and really trying to get away from it i'm kind of just like you know i spend a lot of time alone and i'm just like thinking about the future or like mm-hmm. thinking about cool things in the past or just kind of you know uh i'm really it's really a chill kind of vibe and i yeah. love it and it's another thing i think as an extension of what i was saying earlier about what I took away from the way that you treat social media, like th- that's something that really encouraged me to wear, like, uh, to wear a lot of what's going on with myself psychologically yes. and to make a lot more posts about like really just truly how I feel about certain things. Hell yeah. And a lot of times it's manifested itself as like, you know, support or optimism or positivity mm-hmm. just cause like, that's what I'm attracted to. Absolutely. And, and you know, as an extension, uh, a lot of people are afraid of like what VR is and it's like, it's, it has this, uh, like VR specifically has this connotation of being like you're escaping reality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, I think what it can really, what it's really going to manifest immersing is immersing in reality. Yeah. You're like developing your own and by extension, optimizing yes. uh, your, your, your material. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the same thing of like people who are like furries or even b- back to this eyes wide shut party where it's like this almost this inverse sort of meta thing of like, we're going to wear masks, but only to like really sort of like take off a different. Yeah. One. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I really do think that, like the way that you've treated your virtual persona as it relates to social media is something that we're going to see and that has the potential to really kind of revolutionize how we interact Absolutely. and like how we how we identify ourselves and um, I was going to say like that's something that can manifest itself in the material world and it does like this idea of creating a persona and just being how you want to be yeah. here but of course you know it's like I said even though I'm trying to work on doing that and materializing it but at the same time I like to kind of just go to those places where I can just be that way yeah. and, and I think and you're allowed that, to we all are and, and that's what you know we saw those I don't know if you I don't know how familiar you are with the you know we talked about VR but particularly like the VR chat yeah, if you saw those all the knuckles memes and stuff, but like yeah. that world is that world and the type of interaction that happens in, in that game is amazing. Like, there's literally no gameplay at all. It's just walking around, and, and yeah. you see people get to people get to play characters and they get to do their own voices. And there's just all kinds of improv and funny interactions, and I love that. It comes coupled um, with a shit ton of criticism, though, because there's a lot of exactly. like toxic, cancerous shit that's still. It's, it's always going to be that way, but to me, it's like with all these things with like people's perception. And that's what I was going to say too. Yeah. You talked about you talked about being more transparent and wearing your psych, psychological uh, self, or wearing you know taking yeah. your mask off, wearing who you are on your sleeve, especially on social media. Yeah. Um, how we approach technology, and, and you see, like you know, I'm presenting this kind of love. I'm like, I love to be myself, and I love technology, and I love to express myself. But then, of course, we see mo- a lot of people who are like, you know, it's it's love and fear. It's and to yeah. them, it's like I'm a you know, it's like fear. They're like, no, uh, Facebook is an is an escape. Virtual reality is an escape. Um, I'm afraid to express myself. It's mm-hmm. it's it's very basic. That's what I. So at the end of the day, if the most simple you, thing you can boil it down to is is the traditional love and fear spectrum. Yeah. It's like you know, approach life and everything with love, and it'll be fine. And then like approach it if you try to approach it with fear, it's just you know, it's Fuck not yeah, it's, out, it's, so. it's really it boils down to you util- to a utility. Yeah. As human beings, when we reach a certain level. You know, we co-opt these concepts of what is love, what is truth, what is fear, what is hate, mm-hmm. what is sex, what is whatever. You know, like we, we, we co-opt them to be a utility, uh, and that's usually determined by where we're coming from. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just see a lot of evidence uh, from you, from a lot of new friends that I have, old friends that I have, uh, strangers. You know, there's a lot of this evidence of like, you know, we, 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 we are trying to co-op these philosophies to like, to, to deconstruct ourselves mm-hmm. and construct something entirely novel. You Absolutely. Know, to, this, this new version of ourselves. And Absolutely. I don't know, man. Like, I think all the philosophies that we've talked about, like, it's funny because I think there's like three big ones that we've discussed now. Right. Which is a great fucking number because that, that, that three is what, you know, compromises new dimensions and then that the, three the third circuit <laughs> yeah and um 
I don't know, man. I just, I really appreciate you being on here. It's been a fucking phenomenal conversation. Hell yeah. Like it always is. I was about to say, like, that's a, that's a good place, like, to kind of reconcile. It's like love and fear, you know? Like, especially on this, like, Valentine's Day. Like, you Fuck know, just, yeah. just like love and all things. You know, you see so many people, like, posting about relationship and I'm single. Uh, you know, it's just like love and all things. Like, yeah, you know, love, love yourself, love your community, Fuck love yeah. everyone. I love you, man. Yeah, love you. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what it's about. <laughs> So if you dig this content, you can go and find more at facebook.com forward slash hard reset ATL. Hard reset is the moniker of our collective, our community, our label for any of the content that we decide to produce, whether it be literature, records, podcasts, video content. So go find the page that's facebook.com forward slash hard reset ATL and go like the page for Apophenyac as well. That's facebook.com forward slash apophenyac podcast the song in the beginning of this episode is from local atlanta artist the prince of lo-fi himself ether wave uh the name of the song is green ghost it's off of ep of the same title you can find him at etherwave.bandcamp.com that's e-t-h-e-r-w-a-v-e dot bandcamp.com the song you're hearing right now is from a formerly tampa-based experimental noise artist called amphetidex